Hey guys, Gary J here again, and here is another beautiful, fantastic rifle. Another one of my favorite rifles from the vault. And this is, you might guess, a Ruger Model 77, a Ruger Model 77 rifle. The caliber of this one is one of my favorite all-time calibers, in, and that is the 270. A 270 caliber. Uh, Jack O'Connor and Elmer Key, uh, that was one of their favorite uh, calibers for hunting. The 270 is similar to that of a 30 alt 6. It'll kill anything in North America. So it's very versatile. You can load it up, you can load it down if you hand load. But it's just a, a great caliber. And this is a, a very beautiful model 77 Ruger. I'll give you a little history about the Ruger. Um, Ruger is known as Stern and Ruger Corpor uh, Company. Stern and Ruger Company. And that's how it started out. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Stern had an untimely death. I don't know what happened to him, but uh, something happened to him in... Um, so Bill Ruger ran the company. Bill Ruger was a, a genius and very successful uh, in making the Ruger rifles and pistols and shotguns and so forth. Uh, he was a, indeed a great innovator in many ways. But uh, you can go back and look at the history of Ruger. Uh, in 1959, they came out with a 44 Magnum. And uh, in 1964, they had the 1022, the 1022, an awesome semi-automatic carbine. And um, they had the number one Ruger. You know, that's kind of like the rolling block type, like in the movie Quigley Down Under, that sharps. That rolling block, that's a beautiful rifle to me. It only shoots one cartridge at a time. But uh, I had one in the 300 Magnum and... Uh, that 300 Magnum is just a little bit too strong. Uh, I wish it had been in a 243 or something else, a little bit smaller caliber than that. But it's a beautiful gun, the uh, Ruger number one. And that was made in 1966 when they started. And um, this uh, Ruger Model 77 here, this one was uh, started in 1968, 1968. And so uh, they would make them in all kind of calibers. They had over 40 different calibers that the Model 70 has been made in. And as you look at this uh, Ruger Model 77, you say, well, that looks like a Mauser type receiver action there. And you would be right, because even the Winchester uh, Model 70 looks similar uh, to the action here. It was built off of the Mauser 1898 Action 2 bolt action receiver system. And the Remington 700 uh, was built off of the uh, Mauser bolt action system as well. Because in 1898, when the Mauser came out in the bolt action, all other rifles have seemed to follow that path when it comes to bolt action, that they go back to the first real bolt action rifle, and that was the Mauser 1898. Now, Mauser had built one before that, but uh, they generally refer to it as the 1898 design. And so there's a lot of similarity between the Winchester Model 70, the Remington 700, and the Ruger Model 77. So there are a lot of similarities between these two, uh, ri three rifle groups here. And uh, a man named uh, Jim Sullivan, Sullivan, he uh, is the one that designed this particular rifle off of the Mauser design and with some improvements to it. And... Uh, of course, you know, uh, Winchester and Remington had their spin on that. And the reason I mention that is because Winchester, uh, Remington, Ruger, they were all in competition in building guns. Uh, 
the Ruger uh, rifles here, like this one, did not have the success as Winchester or Remington did. They were, they kind of had a an edge over Ruger. Uh, I don't think because they were better than the Ruger, uh, but I think because they they were um, in the game for a lot longer time than uh, Ruger was in the game. Because, I mean, this was built in 68, and you look at the Remington uh, 700 uh, rifles and the, and the Winchester 70, Model 70 rifles, uh, they had been in it in a, in a, for a long time. So Ruger was a, kind of a Johnny come lately in the world of these kind of rifles, I think. Anyway, uh, Ruger would make these rifles in all kinds of calibers. Uh, there be they would be eventually over forty caliber, calibers, and they Ruger's been making uh, these guns for now uh, for about fifty years. Imagine that fifty years, and they they have I believe three generations of the model seventy uh, seven, and that is the first generation is the. It's called the Model 77. This is the first generation. Uh, the second generation uh, would be called the Ruger Model 77 Mark II. And the Mark II came out in 1991. And then later in 2006, you'd have the Hawkeye version. And I think actually they changed the name to Hawkeye instead of the uh, Model 70. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But... What a beautiful uh, rifle this is. Uh, I've taken a few deer with this one, and um, it's a, this is a real tack driver here, and I love the action on it. I love everything about this uh, rifle here. Uh, that's a Leopold, or Lupo, however you want to pronounce that. Everybody does it, says it differently, uh, but that's a 3 by 9 scope, and that scope is right on. One thing about uh, Leopold scopes, if you if you have a Leopold scope on your rifle and you did not buy that Leopold scope, but you bought it from somebody else, you don't have a receipt for it, that's fine. If you have any problem with the optics or the crosshairs inside that Leopold, you can send it back to Leopold and they will fix it free, whatever the problem is. They'll refurbish that scope for you won't cost you a penny. I've had that done on one of my Le uh, Leopolds on one of my uh, pistols, and uh, they didn't charge me a penny. So they they have a lifetime warranty. You don't have to be the original owner is what I'm saying. So if you've got a Leopold or if you go to a pawn shop and find one that's not right, as long as it's not got dents on it when somebody's dropped it and, and you banged it up, uh, they'll fix it for you. So that's a great thing to know. Uh, and they do it because I, I, I've been through that with Leopold and they were very good, very uh, nice people to deal with. And that was on a Leopold that I uh, did not purchase originally. And I told them that too. I didn't, I didn't buy it new, so they didn't care. So just letting you know about that. So looking at uh, this particular uh, beautiful Ruger uh, model 77 uh, we're going to look at the stock on it we're going to look at the breech on it we're going to look at the barrel on it a little bit and just see the beauty of this particular rifle and this rifle has a brand new bluing job on it uh, when I first got this rifle the stock on it I got it I got it at a really good price and it came with the scope and that's about a 300 and something dollar scope um originally and uh the stock on it they had a little crack on it and uh the bluing though on the barrel and everything was brand new they had just been blued i guess i don't know uh but uh the stock was the only problem and you see this stock here and i'll show it show it up closer to you uh this stock is like brand spanking new I don't think it has a scratch on it. But anyway, uh, there's a company called Boyd, B-O-Y-D, Boyd Stocks. 
Boyd stock. You can look it up on the internet. I called Ruger about ordering a new stock for this rifle, and they wanted uh, three hundred dollars. Then that was years ago. They wanted three hundred dollars for a new stock. And I found out about Boyd stocks, and I called these people up because they get a lot of stocks, all kinds of guns. And I said, uh, "Do you have any stock? This is a long action because this is a two seventy. There's a difference between your stock if you got a short action or a long action. You're going to have a different stock uh, for those. So uh, he said, "Well, yeah, you know, he looked it up on a computer. He said, "Yeah, I got two of them." And I said. I said, uh, how do they look? He said, they look pretty good. And uh, I said, well, uh, how much are they? He said, uh, well, about $75. It's probably like $70. I think I ended up paying them $79 for this stock, $300 stock. I paid them like $79, I think, for this stock. Either the two, I tell them, pick out the best looking one, you know, when you send me one. And so I got that out of steel because this stock looks like it was never, uh, that no one ever used this stock. Some people buy guns like this and put synthetic stocks on it and they never use the original stock. That's what this one looked like to me. So if you ever need a stock for a gun and you don't want to buy one from, uh, you know, from Winchester or Remington or Ruger or whatever because they're so expensive, look up Boyd, B-O-Y-D, stocks. And uh, you can generally find a stock there really, really cheap. So I was just really happy to, to get this stock because the barrel and the breech, everything on this is brand new bluing. The only thing that was really off on it was the stock looked like it was showing its age really bad and it had a, a crack in it too. So... That's the story about the stock in Leopold. And so we'll take a look at uh, this rifle, at the stock on it, the, bre the breech on it, and the barrel, and give you an idea of what Ruger can do. Okay, guys, this is our stock right here, and this is our butt pad right here. And this butt pad, let me get the focus here is made by Ruger so that's nice right there and again the stock has some pretty wood in it remember I only paid like uh, $79 that was with shipping and handling I think for this stock and it's just mint condition right here and so it's got nice checkering on it beautiful checkering John in uh, black cap at the bottom and when I was talking about the bluing on this right here, look at the bluing there on that bolt. That is so nice. Uh, some good color in this wood. Some, you know, stocks are plain, but uh, sometimes you look up and you get stocks that have a lot of color in them. And it really, really makes them look awesome. So this is just a beautiful wood here on this one. And just looking at the other side here, you can see that wood grain with a lot of color in it too. And that's pretty, that just makes a, a gun to me. I love wood. I, I appreciate synthetic, but there's just nothing like wood on a uh, rifle. So that's the stock, guys. It's uh doesn't have a cheek piece on it, doesn't have the Monte Carlo comb on it, uh, but that's just fine like it is. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the barrel on this Ruger. And look at that ramp sight right there. Isn't that pretty? That I like that, uh, that rear sight, and that is a well-made sight right there too See a lot of work went into that 
and because uh, we have a scope on here and you can see the scope it's not much clearance right here but the great thing about this sight right here is that uh, you can pull this sight down that way it's not in the way of the of looking through the scope okay that's a, a neat feature there too spring loaded but that's a really nice ramp sight right there I really really like that and you see the bluing on this barrel right here and we look at the front side here that is a beautiful front sight thick heavy ramp type sight right here isn't that nice Look at the barrel. A little hard to see there, but a really nice sight on the front here. And again, beautiful bluing on this gun. The stock on it originally looked pretty rough. Um, and that's why I put this new stock on it. And you saw the new stock here. Don't have a scratch on it, it's just beautiful. Now we we'll look at this receiver. Well, you can see with the receiver here, you got this lip right here, which is common with uh, the Mauser. And uh, our bolt. And there's no jeweling to this bolt. Now you could have the bolt jewel, which I think would be a lot prettier. Um, but um, it looks fine like that. Now, one thing that Ruger did, too, uh, is right here. Uh, when you bought a Ruger Model 77, uh, they cut out the top part of the receiver here. And you've got this ledge right here. And you have the same thing over here. They cut out the top part of it right here. And you got this ledge coming across here, this riser. And that was done for a specific reason. Because when you bought one of these guns, uh, you got a set of um, scope mounts to go with it. And instead of having to drill and tap this and have another set of the base scope mounts going here, uh, you simply, all you had to do was to put the Ruger mounts that you got with a gun and uh, you tighten it up here and it, and it clamps to this base part right here, this raised base part. See how that looks. So this was a very uh, great invention by Ruger to do that. That saved you from having to buy scope mounts because they came with a gun and having to get a base mount to screw into that. This way they just clamped on there like this and that worked really well. Now yeah, look at this boat. You see how the bluing is on this boat. It's like brand spanking new. And uh, this boat slides like glass too. It's just really nice. And with any gun, um, and I've already checked this one, of course, it's empty, but with any gun, you want a good trigger pull on it. And on this model here, you could adjust the trigger pull on it. And uh, that was a, a really great thing there. The trigger pull on this one, I'm pulling. It's probably about two pounds and uh, so I like that on the trigger pull that you could uh, you could adjust that and that makes it a lot easier I'm just trying to get that to come in focus but so this is just really a, a nice shooting rifle here And again, we have the safety here on the back of it right here. You push this forward and backwards. And I like that when you're shooting, you know, you can, 
it's really easy just to push the safety forward or backwards. And with the regular Mausers, and again, this is kind of styled after the Mauser action, uh, the safety on them were right here, and they flipped over from uh, 3 o'clock position all the way to uh, 9 o'clock. Actually, that'd be, that would be 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, depending on which direction you're going for the safety. So this is a lot better right here. Now with the Mauser or, the, or any of the others, you can put a 30 degree safety here. It goes only up just a little bit on Mauser actions too. So that's not expensive. Nice looking bolt though. So it's a nice looking breech, nice looking barrel. Uh, and again, the Lippo scope, the mounts, uh, are nice on this too. Okay, on the bottom of this you have your floor plate where you can eject your shells that you have in here. And what ejects those shells? This uh, button right here that you see, that's what that does. When you push on this right here, it releases the floor plate which pops open. Kind of awkward position for me here. But I'm pressing down on this right here, and so that releases it, and this pops open. Take your shells out, and you can see part of the boat there. So, and that's metal. I like that. And you can see the trigger a little better. And it's got an adjustment in this trigger right here, uh, right here, where you can adjust uh, how far back this trigger goes. It makes it easier on shooting. A lot of guns are made with five, six, seven pounds of, of uh, uh, pressure that you had to apply to the trigger to shoot the gun. And, and for some people, especially if you're shooting long distance, that's too much pressure. You want something that's a lot easier. plate right here you got Ruger there which looks really good I love it you know nobody really seems to know what this is uh, people always debate about what this is like a phoenix or some type of eagle or what but nobody seems to really have pinned that down uh, I don't know why but nice checkering job here so this is a beautiful gun here i don't think anybody can argue with the, the beauty of the model 77 ruger what, what a beautiful rifle this is again the only question that was ever raised about these rifles that i know of was the uh investment uh molding process that they use to make uh say the receiver here and the bolt and the trigger and the sears inside here and stuff like that but uh, that process you know was made out of steel that's poured into a, a special mold and uh, at least 90 percent of all the work is already done when you do that and winchester even started doing that on the model 94s i know in in uh, 1964 and uh on the lever actions because the lever actions on Winchester uh, that are pre-1964 are made of billet steel, and they're worth a lot more than those Winchesters made after 64, and some other rifles too. But nothing wrong with the investment molding process. Never heard of any problem with them. Okay, just looking at receiver here, we see that this is Ruger model 77 and uh, just a, a beautiful uh, gun here and right here is our serial number and right here you can see uh, this is 270 Winchester this is, this is a Ruger, but the reason it has 270 Winchester is because Winchester came out with the 270 caliber, which is a great caliber.
Ruger M77. Remember later on they made, uh, with 96, they made the uh, Mark II, which was an improvement over this one. But this one is just a, a fine uh, rifle in itself. And these last a lifetime. And um, then later on they came out with the, the Heritage. Well, guys, I hope this gives you a little idea on the beauty of the Ruger M77 and uh, how well these guns are made. Uh, they will last you a lifetime and just a beautiful rifle. Take care, guys, and thanks for watching. Gary J.